coming up on the Super Boat International World Championships, presented by Steel. And look how close they are. This is unbelievable. Oh, my God, they just hit. Intimidation at its finest. Woo! They just slammed the door. They must maintain their lane. CRC wow. just ran over the back of CMS. Guys, we're done. This thing hurt bad. Get it straight, get it straight, get it straight. Come on, come on. That's the right next to you. We gotta get him, we gotta get him. I got him. My goodness, look at this. Look at this, Tommy. They're running him down right now. Can you believe it? The Superboat World Championships, presented by Steel. Day two of three days of racing the 2015 Superboat World Championships in Key West. The weekend almost upon us, and the anticipation is even higher. We're not changing much. Uh, we had a good boat on uh, Wednesday, so making a couple minor adjustments and uh, try to get around the course fast. Every day is important. Come out with a decent finish. Just, just keep your points up there. We got to do well today after our fourth place finish on Wednesday. So we know we got to, to charge hard, get up in the front, and win this race. That's, that's, the, the, that's the mission for today. Our mission to bring you a great look at three classes of boats racing here. Let's take a look at them right now. Our class is called Superboat. A Superboat is a catamaran from 36 foot to 40 foot. It is a spec engine class. Anybody can build the engine, but it has to be built to a specification. Two motors, naturally carbureted, regular gas. They're not turboed. They're not fuel injected. You're not running on 114 octane fuel. 7,000 RPM, max, one carburetor. The gear ratio is 1.61. Everybody has to run the same gear ratio. This is an exciting class because everybody's the same and you're making it so that the drive and throttle men are the ones that are gonna make that boat win. It's unlimited, so there are no rules. The boats can be as big, as fast, there's no technical limitations at all to the boat. You're gonna have as much power, you're gonna have anybody's engines. Uh, you could have four engines, you could have two engines, you could have 50 foot, it's basically anything goes. And this class, it's run what you brung. Give it your best shot. Exactly what it says, unlimited. We can do whatever we want to go as fast as we want. Well, we're in the Superboat Extreme class, which is a 40-foot V-bomb class. It has a set of spec motors, 572 with a 9.5 compression, single carburetor. With that being said, it's a very competitive class. Everybody's going at almost the same mile per hour. They're turning exactly the same. All the boats that are in the class are very competitive. Lots of action as all these boats and all the classes get prepared for a very important day of racing. Superboat Extreme Class, that's what we're going to look at first. Tommy Sanders here with the voice of the sport, Stan Lane, and one of the stars of our show, as always, is going to be this race course. Looking forward to this race course. It's normally a bear, Tommy, but today more of a teddy bear because we only have one to two foot seas. We have light winds, and they're coming out of the north-northeast, which means they're coming from behind the land, so the land knocks the wind down even further. That's going to make it for a very, very fast racetrack. Three turns, 4.5 miles in length, and the most critical turn is turn number three. That's in the inner harbor. That's almost a hairpin turn. Absolutely, and that's where a lot of the action is going to happen, the back and forth between these teams. It's going to be some very tight racing today if day one was any indication. As we take a look at the final turn right there, you mentioned it, turn number three. We saw so much action there on day number one. Now the boats are in there counterclockwise milling circle. They are waiting with bated breath as we are to see the Superboat Extreme Class, Tommy, take off because these guys have been hot and heavy all week long here in Key West for the World Championships. Of course, taking the first top points on day number one was the Hooters instigator, Peter Meyer, John Stanch. This New York team's been pretty strong. We are looking right there at Hooters Instigator, and just to their right, to their starboard, you see Cooper Stanner. These guys are in identical sister ships, 40-foot fountains with twin 750 horsepower. And we have a green flag, Tommy. We are going racing. They are hammering down. Those tabs are coming up. The drives are being raised. Full throttle to the wall. Here we go. A slight lead by Cooper Standard over Hooters Instigator. Look how close they are. Very, very tight racing. Of course, there's no love lost between these teams. This has been a rivalry for a long, long time out here. This white boat, this red boat, Cooper Standard, 
at Hooters Instigator. And man, have we ever, have we not seen anything this close so far this week, Stan? You know, Tom, this is almost like, a, like an intimidation factor. They're so close, like, you know, you're going to touch me or I'm going to touch you. But now Hooters with a little bit of a surge and acceleration as they head out to turn number one. And now they're giving each other a little bit of distance there, which is wise. You do not want to touch, you do not want to trade fiberglass and exchange gel coat. And now Hooters Instigator with some pretty clear water now setting up for the first turn. You see him leaning over on that chine. And now they've made turn one. They've made it through successfully and cleanly. They have the edge headed down to turn number two. These guys, it doesn't take long. These straightaways, you think, well, you can sort of lay off and not worry about your positioning for the turns, but it happens so fast. That buoy comes up so very quickly that you've got to get in position. The protocol, if there is one, is half a boat lead over the other boat, and you've got the right of way going into that turn. You can choose the inside line. And they're making that turn right now. Johnny Pop Pop Stanch out of New Jersey. Peter Meyer out of New York. But look on the inside now go. with a great move <laughs> to the inside. Look how much ground they made up. Cooper Standard now once again side by side with Hooters. Now, who is going to give? I doubt either one of them will. Oh, Cooper Standard trying to fire a warning shot right here. This is, as you say, Stan, intimidation at its finest. Record crowds are getting some kind of spectacle now as they head down our way, Tommy. And look how close they are. This is unbelievable. I've been doing this 19 years. I don't think I've ever seen two boats this close for this long. This is a long stretch on the course as you head into that always dangerous third turn right there, but it's dangerous. Oh, right, yeah, right here, look at that right there. These guys swapping fiberglass on the way to turn number three. What does that tell you about how strong these two teams are right here? Tell you what, they're picking up today where they left off at round number one, and I, it is unbelievable how close they are. It's just downright dangerous. They got a turn coming up. Something's got to give. It looks like Cooper Standard will give way. Yeah, they had to just relent there just a little bit, and that certainly allowed a great opportunity for the Hooters instigator boat there. And they've picked up now, what, five, six, seven seconds? A lot of liquid real estate was gained on that turn, but they're both still out there racing. If they try to go in there together, I don't know what would have happened. I don't expect either team to give up or stop trying at any point during this short six-lap race here. We are well into it at this point. The leader right now, Hooters instigator, the winner of race number one in this world championship. Can they hang on? When push comes to shove, well, it already has. There'll be more to come. The Super Bowl World Championships presented by Steel is brought to you by GEICO. MTI Marine Technology Incorporated. Hooters. And by Steel, the number one selling brand of gasoline-powered handheld outdoor power equipment in America. Superboat International World Championship here in Key West. This is race two out of three races in this championship effort in the extreme category. A lap number four of a six-lap race right now. Not much time left for the rest of these competitors. Stan Lane all chasing the Hooters Instigator. It's a battle of the Titans, all right. But right now, Hooters Instigator sitting in the driver's seat. You see the number one on their hull. That signifies they are reigning and defending national champions. They want to garner that world championship as well. But if the Red Boat has anything to say about it, it will not happen. Oh, they have been in a battle all year long with that Red Boat right there, also known as the Cooper Standard Twisted Metal Motorsports Racing Boat right there. And they've been mixing it up in a big way. So far, there's the third place boat, Outer Limits. And what a better run today for this boat. They were well off the pace in round one. They are in the pace today, in the fray. And they're trying to gain ground on uh, Cooper Standard as we speak. We jump on board Hooters Instigator. And you see what it's like to be traveling about 125 plus miles per hour inside a 40 foot V bottom. Hooters Instigator, your winner on day one racing. Outer Limits, second place on day number one. Picked up 225 points there, so they're definitely in the hunt for the world championship. What a beautiful machine. It is 40 feet in length as well with five steps. And we have a problem uh -oh. here. Yep. Cooper Standard, Tom, with a tall rooster tail, it's either an engine or an outdrive, and they are definitely well off the pace now. They're going to get overtaken and passed by that boat right there, Outer Limits. Cooper Standard did not need that to happen today. They finished a disappointing third place on day one racing here. They needed to come back with a win on this day and unless something very dramatic happens to other boats they're not going to be able to pull that off well speaking of dramatic perhaps a dramatic number one again for this 
boat right here. Hooters, it's their last lap. Tommy, can they keep it together? Can they get the checkered flag? They are, of course, U.S. won the national champions through the regular season throughout this year, really holding up the standard for these mono-hull boats, and this is their showcase here at Key West. The checkered flag is waiting. You're looking off the stern of that boat. Look at that. Look at the speed. Look at the momentum of this beautiful boat as it takes the checkered flag. A little bit of chine action there, bouncing from chine to chine, trimmed way up high, getting all the speed they possibly can. Congratulations once again to Hooters Instigator. Two days and two wins. Two days of racing, two wins for Hooters Instigator. That is pretty intimidating, yet it is far, far from over. Remember, on the final day, all the points values double. There's a chance for some mischief on that final day, believe us. But right now, taking 500 points is Hooters Instigator. Outer limits, there's an example, just 50 points behind at this point. So there's a lot more on the way. But, you know, a great finish is wonderful, but lap one stand was really the entertainment. Superboat racing fans could not have asked for anything more. And Tommy, you and I couldn't either. It was off the hook. One hell of a race out there. Um, we were bumping coming in all the way around. We were bumping at the turns. It was definitely a drag race out there. It was, it was unbelievable. It was a dead even fight. It's no different than running anything real close together. It's like in car racing. You run that close together, you're going to have things happen. You're going to have bumps. You're going to have you know, stuff that goes on. That's, what, that's racing. You, know, you can't cry. You can't complain about it. You just move on to the, the next race and try to, try to improve and not get in a position where you can have any, uh, any bump and take any route. One race out of three we're covering today is already in the books. Then Superboat Extreme coming up next. Hey, it's the big ones. No limit in Superboat Unlimited. The biggest and the fastest. The fans here in Key West love it. In fact, Key West and all the surrounding areas love their Superboats. Well, uh, boat racing is a pretty friendly sport because all the fans can walk up and meet the drivers and the throttle men and all the crews get real close. People come to Key West to have a good time. Like, it's like the whole town turned out for this. It's amazing the support that they get here. It's an amazing boat right here. Steel boat. I've got steel weed eaters, I got steel trimmers, and now I got to see the boat. Living the dream. Superboat International Superboat World Championships presented by Steel here in Key West, Florida. Day two of three days of racing, and now we're ready for the biggest and the fastest. This is the Superboat Unlimited category. Unlimited power and unlimited technology. Lucas Oil on the cutting edge of technology. And Nigel Hook, I tell you what, he knows how to get the job done. We've been working for several years on this project. For about 10 years, we've been collecting data on the boat, doing data acquisition, analyzing it post-race. But last year, we got into transmitting it live. So all this data, all of these data points from sensors on the boat, from both engines, from biometrics, from accelerometers, all that data has been transmitted live and then sent back alerts to us during the course of a race. Now, actually someone watching the race can actually see what's going on in the cockpit as they're racing. Give them some sort of knowledge of what's going on in the boat so they can feel that and, and really increase the engagement from, from the fan base. Nigel Hook and the Lucas Oil team right there. There's so much tradition in this sport, but if those teams from decades ago, three, four decades ago, could see all the technology that's brought to bear today and the difference it's making for all the fans, they would truly, truly be amazed. Now we're in the milling situation right now. That happens before the boats line up, get fully lined up for this rolling start. Be looking out for the green flag very, very soon in just a matter of seconds. Seven unlimited boats today racing, nine laps, 43 miles. Yellow flag, yellow flag, yellow flag. Still waiting on the green flag. The boats are up on plane. Here we go. I see Geico coming to the mix right now. We have a green flag. Let's go racing. Here we go. Superboat Unlimited, the biggest and fastest in the world. Geico coming up on the inside. Look at him. CMS, CRC, Alex and that. They're all in the hunt, Tommy. Absolutely. The two CMS boats, I should say. The Exactly identical looking. The 03 is the one that finished with second place points yesterday. The number three boat, the, the slightly longer boat, the one that finished with top points on the first day of racing. I can't tell you how important it is to get to that first turn first. That way you establish your lane. If you're on the inside, you control all the other lanes and you can do whatever you want to do. You can cut it tight, you can swing a little bit wider. 
And it into turn number one at full speed, full throttle, 165 plus miles per hour. Now they're starting to grind them down. They're lowering those drives. They must maintain their lanes. Things happen so quickly in Super Bowl Unlimited. You've got to maintain your lane. Oh my goodness! CRC wow. just ran over the back of CMS. First turn, unbelievable this early. CRC came from the inside. Looks like they went through a couple of rooster tails there. The visibility, of course, not good. Man, look at them slamming into that back panel on the 03 boat. I saw huge shards of fiberglass oh. going everywhere. Everywhere. But they're still going on. They're headed down to turn number two at full throttles. We'll see what happens. Now the 03 boat, yeah, you knew that something happened there. Too much glass was in the air. They brought got some damage there, and they are headed for the pits in a high rate of speed, Stan. Race control, CMS. Uh, we're, I think we're taking on water. We're going to try to go in. Okay, CMS, you're going in? Roger. Yeah, we got hit uh, in the side back there in turn one. Copy that. Guys, we're done. This thing's hurt bad. Hey, guys, get to a crane, quick. And towboat, you want to keep an eye on CMS? Roger. Oh, one of those CMS boats taking on some water, so that's something we hate to see for our fellow racers right there. That's uh, that's too bad. Who hit who? Uh, who hit Johnny? Uh, I think it's CRC. Boy, that boat! Damn. Damn. CMS 03 boat. You can see it right there. That is not insignificant damage at all. But the team remain optimistic that they can get something done overnight and over the next day. They've got about 36 hours to prepare for that next race. Let's get back out to the boats. That uh, collision we saw there took place in turn one of lap one. Now we're back into the action. Back into the freight. It is hot and heavy and high speed indeed. There is your leader, number three. Once again, Team CMS looking good as they have all week here in Key West, but hot on their heels is Team Miss Geico. Miss Geico making a bid to be a part of this one once again. Speed racer boat hanging in there in third place about tied neck and neck is Alex and Ani, Team CRC. Great bad. Lucas Oral also doing extremely well. I guess that uh, telemetry is paying off for him. Could be. Could be giving them a little extra push that they need right there. Certainly delighting all the fans back home who are following all that data coming off that boat. Look at this battle here, Tommy. Almost side by side. Humongous rooster tails. And Geico has to stay out of that. Obviously, they weren't successful in doing the stand. They got a pretty good hosing, as you might put it, right there. And of course, they had that failure, that mechanical failure. And look at the smoke. Look at the smoke already starting with Geico here, even earlier in race two. It's been hard luck in rounds one and two for Team Miss Geico. And now they are dead in the water and being passed up by CRC Sunlight. Team CRC, which picked up third place points, 202 of them on day number one. Number one, course two. Started with seven boats in the Super Boat Unlimited race already. We are down to five. You see the Miss Geico boat there for the second day in a row. Disabled in the water, so a disastrous race for them. And who can forget this punishing hit taken by CMS03. That was violence. Going to take a lot of work in the pits tonight for those guys to be ready for day number three. But we got more of this race coming up when we return. The Super Boat World Championships presented by Steel is brought to you by MTI, Marine Technology Incorporated, WHM, Plumbing and Heating Contractors, Steel. To see the full line of Steel Outdoor Power Equipment, go to SteelUSA.com. And by Lucas Oil. Superboat Unlimited racing on day number two in the World Championships in Key West. Just moments ago, while we were away, the team Alex and Ani, this boat as well, experiencing mechanical problems. That makes for a grand total of three boats already out of this race. We saw it earlier. The second day of racing in a row, the Geico team, the Miss Geico boat, more or less disabled in the water and that massive hit taken by the CMS 03 boat out there right after the first turn in the first lap of this race. Boy, Tommy, that definitely left a bruise, didn't it? Let's go back and see exactly what happened. This is earlier in lap number one. You see those huge rooster tails. I mean, the visibility is nil right there. 
and the boats must maintain their lanes, but apparently when you're going at that highest speed, it's just pretty hard to, to keep those 50-foot boats in check the whole time, especially when you can't see a darn thing in front of you. Yeah, those huge boats, that's a big key to it. They set up an avalanche of spray and visibility definitely in question when you're racing this tightly out there. We were all together, uh, four boats together, pretty much all together at the first turn. There was like four lanes. Uh, the inside lane was a CRC boat. The number three CMS was in the second lane, followed by Geico in the third lane. We were in the outside lane, the fourth lane. We got past the tur first turn buoy, and the boats in, this, in lane two and three started to turn. CRC was in the first lane, but a little behind, so when these boats started turning, it couldn't make the turn. He wasn't able to hold his lane, and he slid through the rooster tail of CMS-3 and Geico, and when he came out of the rooster tail, we were there, and he slid into us. We had no choice but to go into it hard like we did. Um, I thought we were going over, actually. I already grabbed my oxygen, thought we were going over, but unfortunately, we knocked Johnny out, and I'm really upset about that. It was just a, one of those racing calls, and it was a racing accident, and. Uh, I'm really sorry that, you know, we knocked those guys out. Incredible amount of damage to the 03 boat. Remarkably, not so much for the Team CRC boat. They're still in the race, definitely, but there's your leader, a dominating performance so far for two days in a row. They have a very, very solid 20-second lead over the second-place boats, but it's a great battle for second place as we speak between CRC Sunlight Supply and Speed Racer Performance Boat Center as they come around turn number two, and here they're setting up to come down the back stretch now right in front of us, and they're almost side by side. Big time battle. We're in the eighth of nine laps here. Very significant. Who comes out with the second place points? You want to get as much pad as you can going into the third and final day of racing as we head into that always active turn number three. And on the inside is Speed Racer coming up on their outside, though, is CRC. They got to be very, very careful. They have to maintain their lanes. We've seen way too much action in these turns. Let's see how this plays out, Tommy. Right into this place where we've seen so much happen before, and you got to get your speed right. You can't be too fast or too slow, and it looks like a lot of speed involved there with the CRC boat. And look at that. To the inside comes the speed race. Wow, what a move by Performance Boats. Did you see him right there? That MTI screaming out of that turn. They took the shorter route, and it really paid dividends for them. Right, a pretty decent lead right there, but certainly it's not over until it's over. But this is lap number nine of nine, so it's up to the performance boat to stay in there for just a little while longer. On board speed racers, of course, Randy Kent, and all the way from Auckland, New Zealand, Chris Hanley doing a great job. Turn number one having been negotiated right there and coming out wide is the CRC boat and gaining ground as well. Oh my, a problem for Performance Boat Center. They're coming off, they're coming off it, and they're going through the rooster tail, and now that puts CRC Sunlight Supply in firm second place. Boy, they had just a little bit more of this race course to negotiate. What a terrible time to have a breakdown, and not much of this course left at all for CMS number three once again for two racing days in a row, a masterful performance. The checkered flag is waving for that boat right there as they go by. Excellent job, gentlemen. You are sitting on top of the world right now. Two down, one to go. Second place right there, CRC Sunlight Supply. Fairly amazing considering the rough start they had in lap one, turn one. A huge crash in CMS 03. And there you go in third place, Lucas Oil Silver Hook hanging in there. One, two, and three. The three boats left running in this very hazardous race when it comes to surviving. There you have it, it's official. The full points, cumulative points for two days. CMS number three on top. They have, of course, 500 points. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a perfect score. We got a good start. We got into first position by the first corner. We were able to defend our position and run the entire race. We had no mechanical issues, so it, it was really a good race for us. Everything fell together, and the last race has double points, so we're by no means out of the woods yet, but we're in a good position. Superboat Unlimited, two races in the books right now, but the second race for the Superboat class is coming up. We'll have that for you. And expect some fireworks when we return. Back in Key West, Florida, the Superboat World Championships presented by Steel. Second day of racing, and we have reached it. It is time for the Superboats. Okay, baseball's going out. All right, let's go. Here we go, Jack. Okay. Go for it. Attention all race boats for race two. 
Attention all race boats for race two. Respond to the milling area. Copy that, thank you. That team from California, Bob Teague and Paul Whittier took top points. 250 of them on day number one, but it's a strong field and anyone could jump up on day two. All right, guys, we're going. So that's, that's the milling area. Sounds good. I hope it stays that way. Me too. Those two guys aren't going to be a factor. Uh, Randy's fast at the start. Always. Where do you want to be? All the way over here? I, that's what I'd like to be. All right. But wherever you end up, you end up. We'll just try to keep it, stay out of someone's watch. Three control from Turbo 1 in position, turn 1. Copy that, thank you. Bronco 05, radio check, radio check. Good luck, guys. Good Milling time before they line up for the start just about over. Gives us a chance to take a quick look at the points after the first day of racing. Amsoil WHM Broadco. Three teams on top there. We have a three race event for the World Championship here. Nine laps in this race, 43 miles total. They're going to get lined up and we are very close to getting that green flag. But got to get them all lined up and got to get it sufficiently for the judges to flash that green flag. Yeah, their boats are up on plane now. They'll form a straight line behind that pace boat. Looks very, very nice. Very evenly, 100 feet back behind the pace boat. Watching for that green flag. And guys, speaking of watching, watch out. Don't get too close. My goodness, they Already? Buddy. Good. Already. <laughs> no wow. harm, no foul, but that was close. Superboat style. It's Sailor Jerry's Auto Nation off to early lead. Look at him screaming out there, but right beside him is Broadco. Stay here. That's clear. Stay here. Steel's on there. Stay here. He's over there. You're right. Come on. Get this. Get yourself honed on in, okay? Look at the wrong pin. All right. Yeah, I'm looking at the wrong pin. Check it out. There's your leader, 33, headed out to turn number one. The rest of the pack, they're all bunched up side by side, Tommy. What a fantastic start for Sailor Jerry Auto Nation. Had a rough run of it yesterday. Only completed seven laps, so one of two teams that did not complete the full nine and three quarter laps. Uh, a different story for them today, but back gaining on them. Oh my, look at that. Three boats side by side. They're so close. They're in the rooster tail, in the wash of Sailor Jerry is a battle head to head. They're gonna have to find their lane and maintain that lane or we could have catastrophic results. They are so tightly bunched now, they're giving each other plenty of berth. That's WHM right there in mid-pack. Stay right in on it. it. Right on Stay it. in it. Stay in it. Stay up. Stay up. Come on, buddy. As they head down to turn number two, you see him raising the trim. That, that bow getting a little bit light there as he tries to get every mile per hour as he possibly can to run down Sailor Jerry Auto Nation. Seventh place, and boy, they can turn things around. Their fortunes could take a step up here today, day two of three days of racing at Key West. Sailor Jerry, number 33, as they come streaking past us. Danny Lowe's down below here, Randy Swear, W.A. Ship in second place, number five. Third place, Broad goes just behind. It's a dead heat for fourth, Pivot Construction, Amsoil, and Steel just off their transom. We're from the Boat Center, bringing up to rear 21, and then Maritimo just behind them. Oh my, what a battle, Tommy, we have Absolutely. going on. Absolutely, and what a turnaround from yesterday. The Amsoil team so dominant yesterday, now running back in the middle of the pack or even towards nearer the back of the pack right now. Cleveland Construction has had a terrible race yesterday. A couple of laps that they were out, they're back in it today. Got an MTI in the lead, it's 41 feet in length. You have a 40 foot skater just behind. Great shot right there you see in the wash is WHM. He's gonna try to get over there in the blue water as you see him doing. I'm gonna go over him and then hit him. What's on your side by the way? You're clear, you're clear. Better line. Yes. Excellent. Billy Moff, the WHM boat, finished second in points the first day of racing. Aggression, they know it's what it takes to get that world championship title. 30 years of experience, Billy Moff has seen it all. Well, we're in Key West. Boat racing has been a, a large part of Key West for a long time. Every bit of 36 years. It's different today than what it was. You know, the old days, outlaws and cowboys and boat races. That's what you had in Key West and it was exciting. 
The names go on. It's like a history of names. Don Arano, Joe Mock, Ben Kramer, Sal and Willie. These were guys that were big boat builders in Miami area. Uh, Al Copeland, Al was, Al was a class of his own. I can personally tell you that if there was anything good for the sport, those guys are good for the sport. They would come to, come to Key West, there would be four, five, six boats they would bring with them. They'd bring close to 50 to 100 guys. They controlled downtown Deval Street. Um, those are the days with the chrome-plated chrome nine millimeter pearl handle guns to their side. So for me to be raised in that atmosphere of those days is exciting to me. Myself, my 36th year, hopefully I'll gain my 10th world title. I now got six national titles. You got probably four of us that have been here over 125 years. And that really is an accomplishment. Winning here is what it's about. You know, when you walk out of here and you won the Worlds, nine boats in our class here, that is phenomenal. It's been a long time since we've gotten nine boats in our class. So to roll out of Key West as a world championship winner, you know what that says? You've done your homework. And when you've done your homework and you win in Key West, there's no more to say. WHM in second place, pretty much where they got their mail yesterday. They spent the whole race in second place. About a four second lead right now for number 33, Sailor Jerry Auto Nation. WHM trying to run them down as they come through one more time. And Brodko in third place, a solid third, but just behind in fourth place is Amsoil. Fifth place, Steele, he's in the hunt too. And sixth place, Henry Construction. When we come back, one of the big stories from last year, from 2014, two huge rivals. They are reunited today, locked in. Just like last year. Oh, my. We got it now. You remember last year? We are here in incredible Key West, Florida, the World Championship Super Boats International. Three days of racing. This is race two of the three. Seven different classes of boats are racing here at this great, great event. Show you some results. The winner so far on the second day, Superboat V-Class. Winner, top points taker is Phantom. And in the lone outboard class, Superboat Stock. A great day of racing for Smart Marine Patriot Vapor. Production 3, manufacturer, production 3 class, the developer, My Blue Heaven Boat here at Key West. Top points on day number two. And finally, who can forget production 4 class? It was Babcock's The Crazy Chicken, all the way from Georgia, looking good. Excellent, excellent competition right here so far in Key West, Florida. It is a Sailor Jerry Auto domination, as you just said. Absolutely. They're looking very, very strong as they come by one more time for 33. And WHM in second place. Look at this battle here as they head down our ways, almost side by side. We're catching Bronco. Yep. It is Steel. It is Bronco, just like last year. Oh, my. Steel on the inside, they head down into the inner harbor turn. We got it now. Now is your time if you're going to dive on the rope. Okay. Go. Steel in third place, then brought Co in fourth. Second place is WHM, and still with the lead, Sailor Jerry Auto Nation. Cure for cancer was the was the mark on the boat last year. That was the wrap, and this time it's Sailor Jerry Auto Nation. Still Randy Swears. The old Zapaloni. More than halfway through this race now, and we're, with the exception of WHM, we're looking at a pretty good inversion of the finishes from yesterday. So that's what makes it exciting. Wow, so evenly matched. These motors are maxed out. They will not allow them to uh, rev up past 7,000 RPMs. The boats have to weigh 9,500 pounds minimum, and they are weighed when they are craned out and it just makes for one heck of a great class. Our ball back is still, they're coming. All right, yep, finish, coming. Here he comes, one more time, number 33, your leader, Sailor Jerry's Auto Nation. WHM trying to run him down as they come through one more time. 
Steele looking very good now. They're starting to pick up the pace. Lightening up that load of fuel. Steele, the beneficiaries of a penalty yesterday to the Broadco team. They took over third from Broadco, and now they've taken over third from Broadco again today. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, mother. Got no steering. You're good. Okay, go. Bilge pump, what? Straight line, we're out of the race, dude. We got a fire. We got a water pressure. Shut that engine off. Oh, steel is out. Oh, steel, steel is down. out. That's Mark Kowalski. He's checking, uh, he's going to pull the hatch up, see if he can fix something. Something may have, may have come loose back there. Hopefully they can get things sorted out and get back into it. Race control, steel. We have no steering. Copy that. Steel and plus are steering, they're dead in the water. Copy that. You can see how feverishly he's working trying to get that hatch up. Hey, race control, this is uh, steel number 13. We're taking on water. Wow, once again, the rug has been pulled out from underneath the feet of Team Steel. They were really looking good. I hate to see it for this team because they are so competitive. Absolutely. They were only in third place after the first day of racing. That is certainly not in any way, shape, or form out of position. A tough break for them this time. When we come back, of course, the conclusion of our Superboat race number two and also a look deep inside one of the most frightening Superboat accidents of all time. Broadco barrel roll three times. They're upside down. Wow. The Super Boat World Championships presented by Steel is brought to you by GEICO. MTI, Marine Technology Incorporated. Steel, to find a steel dealer near you, go to steeldealers.com. And by WHM Plumbing and Heating Contractors. Key West Florida Super Boat International World Championships. This is race two of three races for the Super Boat class. And this has been our top four since the beginning of the race. Right there on top, Sailor Jerry Auto Nation trying to win this thing wire to wire after a seventh place start. Race number one, WHM brought Go and all the rest in pursuit. Our leader headed our way. Looking so good, so smooth as they come by. Two and three quarters lap left for Sailor Jerry. Auto Nation, our leader still. WHM picking up about three seconds on him, that last lap right there. So starting to make a little headway, clawing their way back, trying to get into the conversation for first place in this second day of racing. And that's exactly what they did in round number one. They clawed their way back in, and, and as, as they went by the checkered flag, they were they were really barreling down on uh, Team Amsoil in round number one. Will they be able to do that? The Sailor Jerry Auto Nation will have to wait and see, but anything can happen. The Broadco team now solidly in third place because of the steel mishap out there. Steel is out of it, definitely. Both uh, J.R. Noble and Mark Kowalski outside the boat. Their race day is done. They had bad luck last year here. They have bad luck this year as well. But today, in these smooth, benign water conditions, number 33, Sailor Jerry Auto Nation, is the class of the field so far. WHM relentless in his pursuit. Lost Lee. about three seconds right there from the previous lap. WHM just not able to keep pace with the Sailor Jerry boat. Remember, he broke the first day. Yep. Well, just be smart. Be smart, gentlemen, indeed. Hang on to that second place or try to make first if you can. Solidly in third place is Team Broadco looking good. Team Broadco in their first outing since the very start of the season. That boat was rebuilt after one of the most frightening incidents in recent history in Superboats. Went to Cocoa Beach, you know, and as usual, Cocoa Beach always produces those nice, rough races that everyone loves to watch. From looking at some of these rollers that are coming in here, these are all of some five-foot rollers. Up with the green flag, and away we went. Okay, right. green flag, here we go. Oh, they're close, they're tight. The whole race was just a challenge, and I mean, we flew the boat more than I've ever flown before. And we were catching some big air, some big flyers. Right out of nowhere, we just dipped down into one, Shot out of it. Oh my goodness. 
Quadco barrel roll three times, they're upside down. Wow. And then it was the first rollover, ripped all the hatches off. Next rollover, all the water came in and just blew the boat apart. As I see him rolling over, my just heart just went into my stomach, and all I kept saying is, right side up, right side up. Just mass panic, you know? Everything in your mind flashes through what could be happening in the boat, because we, we don't know. I don't see anyone out of the boat yet. So the water's coming in fast, the cockpit's filling up. You know, the boat's on a different angle, it's upside down, there's waves. I located the escape hatch, opened it up, you know? Light comes in, but also at the same time, now we've got a waterfall coming in the escape hatch. Yeah, boat's going down. They need to get some divers in the water there. He made sure that the boat was ready to leave. I exited out of that canopy. I timed it afterwards, of course. Uh, 58 seconds, I was out of the hatch. The disadvantage is that all the people on the shore, including my wife, she, uh, they, we were perpendicular to the beach. So when I got out of the boat, I was laying in the tunnel. So no, there was no visibility of anybody standing on the boat. That probably took you know, maybe two minutes. Then the divers deployed, and we're all just nervous as could be. I was still very upset. I kind of uh, lost my lunch. <laughs> Kelly and I are, are both just immediately in tears, not knowing what to do. So it's pretty much the most helpless feeling you, know, you can imagine. Medical is on the way. So by the time I, by the time he climbed out, I stood up. Everybody got to see us. It was longer than it seemed. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're both out. They're both sitting. They're both up. out. Yeah, great. It was the longest two minutes of, of a lot of people's lives. The boat was a mess. It was just basically a write-off. So what they did is they sent it up to MTI in Missouri. Chuck had met with uh, Randy Sism of MTI, and they came up with the best solution for the problem. Well, when Broadco arrived, they had derigged it, so they had all the mechanical equipment out of the way. We had rebuilt their cockpit, built a whole new deck for it, and it was a pretty big job. And they got it done just in time for Key West. Once we got the boat fixed, it was like I couldn't wait to get back racing again. And that's all I wanted to do was race. Not much fun competing against Chuck Broaddus and Grant Bruggeman, but everyone in the racing community is so happy to be able to do it again this year after that terrible incident. This is their first outing again since that rollover. Pace boat number one uh, maneuvering into position. Time is running out for many of these teams that are out there. Just a perfectly flawless race for Sailor Jerry's Auto Nation. Danilo Zappaloni all the way from Italy. Randy Swears doing a great job. Everything has gone their way. They're on their final lap. You know there's going to be huge smiles on their faces, Tommy. Yeah, what a difference that they make. A seventh place finish did not finish the race on day one. And look at the control they've got of this. Although they have been gained on by WHM in the last couple of laps. They had a 10 to 12 second lead for the most part. And now well, things are getting cut down. And it seems like even more now, Stan. Well, Billy Moff and Jay Muller, they've been grinding and grinding all day long. But look, they just do not have the speed. Up a little. He's, that's him right next to you. We got to get him. We got to get him. I got him. Come on, what did he? Get it straight, get it straight, on, get it straight. Come on, come on. My goodness, look at this. Wrong look here. at this, Tommy. They're running them down right now. Can you believe it? Uh, this, this, how can that happen? After eight and three quarter laps, what is going on? Obviously, Sato Jerry's Arm Nation is having a problem. WHM has gotten by between turn number one and turn number two. WHM making their turn now to head down to take a checkered flag. I just cannot believe this. All right. Well, Sailor Jerry Auto Nation, which had the first place in their pocket, set up for a win in the second day of racing, hoping they can hang on now and just finish in second place with those points there. But WHM all the way, and you talk about a setup for them for the final day. Hey, Billy Moffin Company getting it done. Number five, WHM going across the start finish line, taking the checkered flag in the super boat class and all you got to know the disappointment the devastation of that boat right there Sailor jerry's auto nation what could have happened to take them out like that well certainly the final lap changed things a lot there are your final numbers for this second race of course those are the cumulative points there at whm on top with 475 amsoil broadco sailor jerry auto nation hanging on to get fourth place points our steel power move of the day we got to give it to WHM. Dogged determination to stay within touch of the leaders, hoping for an opportunity, an opportunity which did come their way. Much to the regret, the Sailor Jerry Auto Nation team. Everything went great until the last lap. Coming into the, into the harbor, we had no steering. 
like zero steering. So he's telling me to go faster. And so, you know, we can't go faster with no steering. So we, we got it around the course, but we, we couldn't, couldn't stay in front of WHM. And I, I think we came in second. So we got a few things to improve on, but uh, we're just going to keep going from there. We had to do a lot of work to catch him and stay on him. But we knew eventually if we stayed on him and stayed on him and pushed him, something would break. They broke up power steering. So pushing works, pushing works. Winning's even better though. Winning is everything here at Key West. And the next time we see you, we'll have the third final deciding race. We will crown the world champion. We see you next time.